we greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It is a blessing to be in the house of the Lord one more time. A songwriter said one more time, one more time. I'm just glad to be in the service one more time. Good afternoon, Bethel. We pray and hope everything is well. God has really, truly blessed us to come to this season, not about the money or the gifts, but it's about Jesus Christ, the birth of our Lord and Savior. We just thank God for that beautiful, that wonderful baby that was born in a manger, wrapped in swaddling clothes. Mary was the mother and Joseph was the earthly father. We thank God for the baby. We thank God for the wise man, the magic that saw fit to go see and worship the baby. And they didn't come empty handed. They brought gifts. They bear gifts to give to the baby. Herod wanted, he wanted to destroy that baby. But the wise men, the wise men, the Lord has spoke to him and told, and told him not to go back, but to go another way. So we thank God for his plan of what he had for the baby. We pray for our sick and our shed in. We pray for Brother Jackson and his wife, Gina. We pray for Sister Taylor. We pray for Sister Banks. We pray for all the rest of our sick and shed in. Sister Bussy. We pray, we pray, Lord, we pray for her. All of our sick and shed in their strength in the Lord. Brother Dudley, Brother Dudley Williams. We pray for that brother, his strength. I still believe, I believe prayer changes things and, 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 I, and I know it works because he wouldn't have told us to pray without ceasing. And telling us to always, tell her always, he's always telling us to pray. And that's the way we connect with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We understand sometimes he says yes, sometimes he says no, sometimes he says wait. So we pray for the leadership of this district, his wife. Reverend Sharita Moon C. Wright, our Bishop Harry L. C. Wright, we pray for him in the Lord. A lot of decisions have to be made for the state. We pray for the great pastors of this church and their spouses. Our great presiding elders, all ten of them, them and their spouses. But we point out the one who's over our district, presiding elder Gloria Hall. We pray for all of them. We pray for all our general officers and all our other bishops, the other 19, and that their districts and all of their churches and all their, their great, great pastors. We got great pastors, great preachers in our church. But we don't want to make it seem like we're just sticking to one denomination. We all churches, like our old brothers and sisters say, all churches who doors swing open. In Jesus' name, we pray for all of them. All our brothers and sisters who's going to break the bread of life today are going to do it this evening. We thank, we thank God for all of them. God has been good to us, and we thank Him. So at this time now, we all the people, all the accolades and all everything we can do to make sure we don't leave anybody out. 
of the protocol, of all the protocol. Thank you for families, the less fortunate, the people on the front, the people on the front line, the doctors and nurses, the staff at the hospitals, the ambulance drivers, people driving trucks and planes and bus every, any way they can ship anything. We in prayer for So at this time, let us pray. Let's get into the word of God. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable. Oh Lord, in thy sight, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. Amen. We greet you in Jesus' name. Our text will be coming from the book of St. Luke. The 18th chapter 18 through the 30th verses. The book of St. Luke. The 18th chapter. 18 through the 30th verses. It seemed like every time in the last couple of sermons, every time I try to cut, cut it off, I keep reading and keep reading and the Lord gives me something. So whatever the Lord says, if you tell me to cut the verses, I cut them, but he's been telling me to read all of them, so I've been reading every one of them. I know by, by normally by preaching standard, we try not to use so many verses, but sometimes we have to. Because one thing about it, we want to make sure that we listen to the Lord. The book of St. Luke, 18th chapter, 18 through the 30th verses. And a certain ruler shall I do to inherit eternal life. And Jesus said unto him, Why calleth thou me good? Hmm. None is good, save one. That is God. Thou knowest the commandments. Do not commit adultery. Do not kill. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Honor thy father and thy mother. And he said, all these things I have kept from my youth up. Now when Jesus heard these things, he said unto him, yet lacketh thou one thing. Sell all that thou hast and distribute unto the poor and thou shalt have treasure in heaven and come follow me and when he heard when he heard this he and Jesus said of uh, that Jesus saw that he was very sorrowful he said how hard is shall they that have riches enter into the kingdom of God but it's easier for a camel to go through the needle's eye than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. And they heard that, and they that heard it said, Who then can be saved? And he said, The things which are impossible with men are possible with God. Then Peter said, Lo, we have felt we have left all and follow thee. And he said unto them, Verily I say unto you, There is a man that hath left his house, or parents, or brethren, or wife, or children, for the kingdom of God's sake, who shall not receive manful more in the present time, and in the world to come life everlasting. Four subjects just for a few minutes. God is good. He sure is. God is good. Amen. He sure is. The religious leader sought reassurance. Some way of knowing for sure he had eternal life. He wanted Jesus to measure and grade 
his qualifications hmm. or to give him some task he could do to assure his own immorality. So Jesus gave him a task. The one thing the religious leader felt he could not do. Who then can be saved? The bystanders asked. No one can by his own achievements. Jesus answered implied. But God can do what men can. Salvation is, is cannot be earned. It is a gift. It is, it is gifts God gives. One thing I wanted to point out in this introduction is that a lot of times, and I don't have anything against education, but the thing is, is that one thing we have to do we have to know Jesus Christ. Jesus was telling the rich young ruler that you know what, all your achievements and all those things, all those things are good. But that cannot save you. You are going to have to have Jesus in your life. Because you cannot earn this salvation. You cannot buy this. But the only thing you can do is accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. There's a saying that money cannot buy you happiness. Money cannot buy you love. The only thing you, you can have is have Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior. Are we good as human beings? And we already know what that is. That answer is no. But the thing is, what we can do is keep on striving every single day to do the will of the Lord. All right. I, know, I know sometimes it gets hard. Mm. And the thing what we have to realize is this. What we go through, we cannot do it by ourselves. We have to have some help. And that help has to be from on high. Some things we can do in the natural, but I tell you what, there are a whole lot of things we can't do. And that's why we have to call on Jesus. Ask a Savior to help you. Comfort Strengthen and keep you. He is willing to aid you. He will carry you through. Now the next question, how should Christians act? I'll tell you the truth. Now, when I wrote that down, I said, that's a good question to ask. How should Christians act? Hmm. Remember in the text where it was talking about the rich young ruler, and Jesus asked him, told him, you know, to honor their mother and their father, uh, keep all the commandments, do all those things, and, and he said, well, you know what? I've done all those things in my youth for days. Then the Lord told him, I'll tell you what you got, I'll tell you what you do. All that you have, go give it away, Said it. And what you do is going to follow me. He couldn't do it because of riches. But the thing is, is this. How should a Christian act? The first thing 
a Christian should be humble. Mm -hmm. I want y'all want to make sure y'all stick that down in your spirit, get it far down as you get. Hear me, Bethany. The first thing is being humble, showing humility. One thing Jesus did in his life is that he showed us how to be humble. He was a humble servant. Why well, was that way? Why are you talking about Jesus humble? When Jesus told his disciples to sit down and he was going to wash their feet. It wasn't about them washing heels. It was him that washed theirs. A man of humility. Always, always, always talk to the father. Well, what did he talk to the father? Y'all remember when he had those 5,000? Two fish and five loaves of bread. He lifted up to heaven. He lifted up and prayed to God. Bread, fish. Start running everywhere. And just think about it. They had fragments left over. Humility to the Father. If he showed humility, we can show humility too. Be humble. Not prideful like this rich young ruler, but be humble. Don't let your possessions, don't let the stuff you have, don't let it get to you and stop you from praising him and thinking you done done everything. You, had, you know what? We are nothing without him. We ought to be humble. We ought to be respectful, Lord, have mercy. Y'all know what? You got young folks now. You got some older folks now. Don't respect nobody. Do something for them. They don't say a word. Driving, you let them in. They just zoom right on in like you're supposed to. Right? But respect. Each other. Not because of what color we are. Respect people. Respect them. And I guarantee you, that'll help us in this world. Be poor, Lord. Be prayerful. We know we got to pray. I won't move on because of time. Be loving. Be caring. Love to share. Are our minds and body and spirit? Yes, we are. That's what we are. Mind, body, and spirit. Are we humble enough to study the word daily? And that ought to be yes. Yes. Ought to be hungry. We're saying God is good and the text, I mean, the subject say he sure is. But are you willing to sacrifice time? We know he's good. What about you? Don't get me wrong. We know that there is nothing good what I'm saying right now because we just read the text and Jesus said, ain't nobody good but the Father. Oh, Jesus said it. But my good is what I'm saying. Are you willing to be good enough to work not to be good, to be prideful like you somebody. We say he is, but now what you, you know what? Now you got to do what you're supposed to do. And our text in verse 18, it talks about being courteous. It talks about being courteous. That's what we need to be, more courteous. As Christians, that'll take you a long way. 
Jesus was when he was talking to the rich young ruler. Really? He showed him courtesy. And the thing was, now if you look at it with the ruler, he, I mean, well, at least he wanted to know what I got to do to enter. See? Jesus showed him courtesy and answered his question. Now, we look at uh, 18 and, and, and 19. He was talking about Jesus' question to the ruler who came and called him good master was in essence, in essence. Do you know who I am? Undoubtedly, the man did not catch the implications of Jesus. Jesus replied that the man was right in calling him good because Jesus truly, I mean, Jesus is, I mean, Jesus is. And y'all know what that is? Point number two, that was an understatement. Jesus really is good. But Jesus wanted to point everything what? To the Father. That's an understatement. See? But the third one, it said Jesus from 22 to 23, 24, 27. It said Jesus is what the young ruler needed. Not position, not education. He needed to be holy. I've already mentioned that to you. Because that's not going to get you in heaven. I think a roundabout way. I think now that a roundabout way. Because I'm an educated man myself. But I don't let that get I don't let that get in the way about serving the Lord. Because I know who get me up in the morning. I know who gives me health and health and strength. I know. So I'm not gonna let that get in the way of serving the Lord. And that's what the rank, that's what, that's y'all really. And I'm saying it again. That's what he needed. What's the Holy Spirit? And that's what everybody needs right now. The Holy Spirit. And the last one, uh, 26 through 30, you have a better benefits. Because you know what? They were talking about we didn't live. Our mama, daddy, husband, wives, children, friends. That's what people was talking. But you know what Jesus told them? In the long run, you're going to reap more benefits than ever if you follow Christ. One thing we have to remember is this. Let me just say this. I'm getting ready to close. But let me say this. We don't own nothing. And I think we get caught up. We get caught up in the flesh. We don't own anything. We don't even own ourselves. We were bought with a price. I remember a song, uh, uh, Brother Eric, it was some years ago. Yeah, you sing this song, all that I own, he said, belongs to God. Hmm. He went from his, his mama and daddy, his wife, his children. He said, they don't belong to me. Everything belongs to God. And I can tell you again, you don't even own yourself. It belongs to God. Everything we own belongs to God. And in any kind of death or death situation, it hurts. The separation from a loved one, close friend, you've been known all your life, your mom and your daddy, brother, sister, it hurts. But I always tell anybody, as long as they were a believer. Because all of us got a number on our back. And we don't know when it's going to happen. But we have to be ready. So the thing is, is this. God is good. He, he really, I mean, he sure is good. But now we got to do our part. 
If God is good, I want to worship him. If God is good, I want to praise him. If God is good, I want to read this book. I want to come to church. I, I mean, I want to do all this. Thing. If God is good. I hear a lot of people say that and they don't even go to church. But they say God is good. Isn't good, isn't God good enough to come and praise and worship? Isn't he good enough for Sunday school and Bible school? Yes, he, is he good enough to live the life and let men and women know about him? Is he good enough? Because we cry that all the time that he is good. And he's good all the time. And he is too. I like the old songwriter said, you can't make me doubt it. Because I know too much about it. That's the reason why, why I do what I do. To do everything I can to live the life of Christ. Let's show them how much we love him. Do we really love him? By loving him, we should serve our fellow man. That's, that's, that's how we show. Not anger or hatred toward each other, but by loving one another. God is good. He sure is. I don't know nobody better nobody. or greater than him. God is good. He sure is. We will tell. I promise you. God is good. He sure is. He has proven himself to us. Now, it's time for us to show him how much, not just to be talking it, but to show him how much we love him. God is good. Yes, he is. God is good. And he good. Oh, I don't care if you're sick. God's still good. Continue to be. 
be safe. During this coronavirus season, I'm just going to call it just going to last for a little season. And it's going to go away. God bless all of you. Remember our sins. Call and check on each other. And everything is all right. We pray for all the folks that had birthdays. I just thought about it. That had birthdays this month. God bless you. And we pray that you have many, 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 many more. That the Lord will keep on smiling on you, on this world, on this, on this, on this world. And thank God, is our prayer. Now unto Him who's able to keep us from falling and keep us faultless before our Maker. May the grace of our Lord and the love of God, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with you now henceforth and forevermore. Amen. And may God bless everyone. Amen.